Hey, Brandon. Hey, Dr. Rutherford, how are you? Good, how you doing? Good. Just busy. <laughs> Good, this, this class will keep you busy all by itself, yeah. let alone yeah. anything else you have going on. Yes, sir. And I'm sure you've got plenty going on. Just some classes right now. Okay. So. Hey, like, how do I... How do I say your name? Lakin? Lakin, that's right. Okay. Okay. Good to see you. Hey, Taylor. How you doing? Hello. Good. Good. How y'all doing? How's the class going? It's, it's going good. Yeah. Just keeping up with everything. There's a lot to keep up with. A lot of details. And you got to stay on it. Um, I put that schedule together to, to hopefully help you keep track of what you need to do. So if you just stick with that schedule, you shouldn't miss anything. But it's, if you don't stick with the schedule, the likelihood of missing something is pretty high because there's a lot of details. Um, question. Yeah, go for it. How similar, how similar is like the, uh, the homework to the quiz and test? Uh, very similar. Uh, <clears throat> All, all the questions are going to come right from the textbook. So every, everything you do for the whole semester is coming right out of the textbook. Okay, and do we get our equation sheet on the test? Yes. We do? Okay. Yep. And uh, a question you might be asking that uh, you haven't asked yet, but I'm going to try to put it in your mouth. Uh, I, I, I do not have Proctor U set up yet, so I know I said in the introduction video that you should go ahead and sign up as soon as you can. Well, you can't yet because I don't have it set up. But I'm, almost, I'm this close to getting it set up, so I'm hoping to finish that this afternoon. So I'll send out an email to the whole class when Proctor U is up and running and you can actually sign up. So I, I figure nobody's quite ready for the test yet, so it's, it's not imperative just yet, but I'll have it up. I'm hoping today. And we can do that test at any point, um, as long as it's before the 23rd, I think? That's correct. So the, the, the DUE due date that's on the schedule, that's, that's the last possible time you can do it. You can do it any time before that you want. But uh, two things with the test. You can't log in to the, you, you can't, if you click the test button, like you're ready to take the test, you know, like you would in your homework. You click the homework button and the homework pops up, right? When you, took, you click the quiz and the quiz pops up. But if you click the test, it's going to ask you for, a, pop, for a, uh, um, um, a password. And you don't have that password. Uh, only only uh, myself and the proctor, you folks, have that password. So you can't actually get into the test until you're with a proctor. Um, and, and also, uh, the, the test is like the quizzes, it's got a timer on it, so once you've logged in, you can't stop until you finish. Does that answer your question, Brandon? It was probably, it it was probably more information than you needed. Um, and at the, so the time that we turn in, and after the test, we send you a scanned picture of our um, work for that, and is that when we send in the labs as well? Uh, I would suggest you do the labs before that. So, um, hey, is that Madeline? How you doing, Madeline? Good, how are you? Doing well. We're talking about the test right now. Um, so, uh, you know, all the, the labs help you understand the concepts for the test. So I would say have your labs all done and ready to go and send them in just before you take the test so that it's off your radar. But, or or uh, for that matter, I guess, let me try that again. The, te the, the labs need to be sent in on that DUE due date. Um, I, what is it, the 23rd, I think is what you said a minute ago. And, and so I think, so, so just send them in somewhere at, on that day. But when you take your test, send in your work for the test right after your test. So whatever, whenever you take your test, send that work in right away. So you have, so basically WebAssign is going to tell me when you finished your test. And you need to send me your work within 15 minutes 
of that time. Does that make sense? That way, you, you know, that way you're not working on it without your proctor. Okay, and also I had a question about yeah. uh, for a lab, like mm -hmm. I know you touched on in the introduction about how we turn it in, but could you just state again um, how we do it? Because I'm, I did one today and Good. I'm just trying to, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, so the, you did the first one, the, the math one? Yes. Yeah, the math one is a little bit different than the rest because there's not actually a lab with it. I mean, it's, it's you doing work, but it's not, there's not equipment involved and that sort of thing. Um, so with, with that one, you're just gonna end up with a, a couple few pieces of paper, and what you need to do is take a picture with your smartphone, or if you've got a scanner, that's easier. But if you don't have a scanner, just take a picture with your smartphone and use that so software called Cam Scanner, and it's, it's a free download, a free app for your phone, and uh, it just turns those images that your cell phone takes and turns them into a PDF document and it cleans it up a little bit so that you know it removes shadows and you know when you take a picture of a piece of paper it all gets all wonky like that and it, it straightens it out and uh, makes it a better image and then puts puts all your like if you've got three pieces of paper it'll put them all three into one document and you send me that document on the on the 23rd send you the document through uh, email after the after that's the correct can scanner? yep yep Oh, we send it that day or by... Send it on, on the due date. On the due date. Yeah, the DUE date. Okay, because and also... Okay. Go, go ahead. Oh, and also, I had a question about the... Uh, the on the list of um, the materials we need. Do you yeah. have another exact name of the um, Play Mobile? I think I'm saying that. Uh, cannon that we need to get? Yeah, it, they, they only make two kinds of cannons. They make different colors and some of them make the little plastic thing at the end fire and some of them make it a spear and some of them make it a ball and some of them make it, it doesn't matter which one you get. The, the key is, uh, it's, it's just a little cannon. And exactly the thing that it shoots out doesn't matter. And what color it is and if it's a pirate one or a I don't know, an army one, it doesn't matter. Uh, just just uh, a little, a toy cannon. Here, let me, David's trying to get in. Let me get in here. Hey, David. Hey, David. Does that answer your question, Taylor? So yes, the yes, answer yes. is any of the cannons that Playmobil makes. Okay. Um, and, you know, you can, you can, I mean, Playmobil's been doing this for a long time, and so some of them have become collector items, and and the, it's going to cost you like $30 for a cannon, don't get a $30 one. <laughs> get, get a $5 one. They're all the same. Okay. Unless you really want to match one with the set that you have that <laughs> you want to buy the collector's edition version. I, I wouldn't suggest that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. What other questions oh. do you all have? Go ahead. I have a question about taking the test on campus. Yeah. I don't live that far from PC. Oh, good. Okay. So if we're going to do that, how do we need to like set that up? Do we need to email you in advance and let you know we're planning on coming or anything like that? I'll just be here. Um, the, only, the only thing that I need to be aware of, I, well, what I'll do, okay, so the, only, the only complication is uh, the building is always locked. And so unless your key card is active, it won't let you in the building. So I'll just, I'll just kind of, I'll prop open the front door to the building so that you can come in the front door. So, so okay. the, the door that is on the GDH side, you know, R Richardson, uh, the one that has physics and chemi chemistry is on the third floor, and biology and PA schools on the second floor, and physics on the first floor. Um, I'll just open up the door that points towards GDH and that door will be open and you can come in there. Okay, thank you. Unless, you know, sometimes police walk by and say, hey, that door's not supposed to be propped open, and they, they pull the prop out and shut it. Uh, in which case, just start banging on windows, and <laughs> I'll be in here. So uh, you just, just find me, and I'll let you in. And, and the same is true with the study sessions. Um, if you all want to come to the study sessions, if, if you can't get in one of the doors, uh, just bang on the window or email me ahead of time so I know to prop the door open for you. Um, there you go. Because I'm just here in, in room 115, so 
Uh, and we've got a handful of students doing research around here, so it's, it's, there are a handful of folks around. Um, and there's usually a couple students in here, although nobody's, nobody's come yet this semester. What other questions do y'all have? Does that answer your question, Lakin? Yes, sir, thank you. Mm -hmm. What other questions do y'all have? Do you want like class questions or specific questions to the homework? Tomato, tomato. <laughs> whatever, whatever you need to know to help you get the class done, whether it be questions about how the class works or physics, we can go either way. Um, then could you kind of um, show us how to go through a number? Um, it was number 13. On the first homework set? Yes. Give me a minute to get there. Um, I, I put this one up on the, um, on the commonly asked questions. So it's, it's up on that list. If, have you seen that video yet? Um, I don't, I didn't think 13 was up there. I can let oh, me go check again. I thought I put it up there. I meant to. No, sir. I don't, uh, 13's not up there. I don't think. Well, that's it, well, not, it's not. Okay. That's not good. I should have put it up. Um, I know I, I edited that video, so I do know it exists. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure it's up. That'll be what I do today. So I'll make sure that's up there because that's, that's kind of a long uh, problem. And I'm not opposed to doing a long problem at all. So in general, if you have a long question, let's do it. I don't have a problem with that. But I do want to put that one up because that, that is a, a good one that you want to be able to stop and rewind and that sort of thing. So. Uh, um, I'll put that one up there, and if you still have a question, ask it again on Thursday. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. Because that, that's, that's definitely one that a lot of people are going to ask about. I, I mean, I'm, we are talking about the helicopter one, right? Yeah. No, so the, the helicopter one was... Uh, oh, that's 14. 15. Oh, I'm thinking, let, me, let me read number 13. We'll try this again. A train traveling down a track at 31 meters per second when the engineer hits the brakes resulting in an acceleration of negative one. Oh, this one's not up. You're right, Brandon. Sorry. Is number 14 on the commonly missed or commonly asked questions? Yeah, it is. Okay, well then let's work on number 13 right now. I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> You're fine. How far does the train move during a 62 second time interval starting at the instant the brakes are applied? Okay, so uh, Brandon, why don't you give me your numbers Tell me, um, read me the numbers for the problem. Okay, so um, initial velocity is 31 meters per second. Can you read that? Is that big enough? Or is that too small? Should I make it bigger? Of course. That That's works. good? Okay. Um, and then the uh, acceleration is negative one meters per second squared. And the time is 62 seconds. And the question is, how far? Is that what it asks? Um, how far does the train move within 62 seconds once the um, brakes are applied? OK. So, uh, <clears throat> so how far is translated as delta x. So the, the physics language is change in position. The English language is how far. And, and just to clarify, when you say how far, that means the, the non-vector version. It just means distance. So uh, as opposed to displacement, you know the difference between what I'm saying there? The difference between distance and displacement. So if it has- Displacement has direction. Exactly. So displacement is also direction. Distance is just how far, we don't care which way, just how far, okay? So you've got a train and I'll draw a real simple train because that's all I can draw. It's a box, okay? And it's going down the tracks this way at 31 meters per second. And then the engineer who's driving the train hits the brakes and the thing slows down, slows down, slows down and comes to a stop. 
Okay? Now, <clears throat> it tells you the acceleration. So, uh, let's, let's do it this way. Uh, I think I know what mistake you may have made. Um, tell me what you did, and then we'll, we'll talk through it as we go. Um, so I uh, saw that we had pretty much all the variables for the third equation. Okay. And I plugged it into that. Okay. Uh, once I got my final answer and plugged it into WebAssign, it said it was wrong. Right. Okay. So let's let's write that out. So you said equation number three, which is delta x equals v naught times t plus one half a times t squared. And you looked at this and you said, ah, I've got all those numbers. Plug them in. Right. And so what you're you're saying here, you plugged in thirty. Whoops, thirty one here for v naught. You plugged in sixty two here for time, plus one half negative one times sixty two. Square. You just plugged in your numbers, and WebAssign gave you the big red X, and you said, oh, I hate the big red X, right? Uh, <clears throat> here's the trick. Let me show you what, what happens here. Look at equation number two for just a minute. Equation number two says acceleration is equal to change in velocity over time. And so, what that means, what does that triangle mean? Right there? It means um, delta, or it means uh, yeah. final minus initial. Right, it's the Greek letter delta, it means final minus initial. So it's going to be final velocity minus initial velocity over time. And, and let's, let's do this for just a minute. Let's solve this equation for time. Okay, I know this is not intuitive, this is not necessarily what you're, you're thinking you want to do, but just follow me for a minute and we'll see where this goes, okay? So how do we get this T upstairs and by itself? Multiply on both sides. Okay, so let's multiply both sides by T. So the T is going to cancel out there. And uh, okay, so now T is upstairs, how do we get it by itself? Divide by A. So now we'll divide both sides by A. So that's going to cancel out. So now our new equation is T is equal to V final minus V initial over A. Okay, so what's the final velocity of this train? Well, let, let's call it a car. What happens when you hit the brakes? Oh, Brandon, turn your microphone on. Oh, sorry. Um, so the way the question was worded, I don't, it said within 62 seconds, um, but I don't think it specifically said that it comes to a complete stop. You're right. It doesn't. So you're seeing where I'm taking you here, right? Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. The question is, how long does it take this train to stop? And the question doesn't tell you, right? Does it take 62 seconds to bring the train to stop? I don't know. Let's figure that out. How long does it take to stop the train? Okay, so let's, let's figure that out. How much time does it take to stop the train? So if the final velocity is zero, the initial velocity was 31, and the acceleration is negative one, how much time is that? You shouldn't need a calculator for this one. Oh, sorry. I, was, oh, it's I know, it's a habit. I, I know. <laughs> Go ahead. 31. Yep. It's, it takes 31 seconds to bring this train to a stop. Now, the problem tells you that all, the only thing the engineer did was put on the brakes. Since the brakes can't make the train go backwards, that means it's acceleration here. This acceleration right here is only valid while it's stopping. Once it comes to a stop, it doesn't turn around and go backwards. Does that make sense? So it would only accelerate at this rate for a whole 62 seconds if, after it came to a stop, the engineer then threw it in reverse and sent it backwards. Since the only thing the engineer did was put on the brakes, we really only have 31 seconds 
of acceleration, of acceleration. And, and so the trick with this question is, it didn't tell you how long it spent accelerating. And so when you plugged in 62 here and here, what you're saying is it spent 62 seconds accelerating, which isn't entirely true. It really only spent 31 seconds accelerating. The timer was just ran for 62 seconds. What was it doing for the other 31 seconds? Just stopping. Just sitting there. So does that make sense? Yeah. And I, um, and I fully agree. This is a little bit of a tricky question. Uh, yeah, I understand where you're... Uh, it's a web assigned question. Yeah. Um, okay, does so that answer your question? You, Go ahead. Do what? Go ahead. So would you plug that um, t value into like the third equation? Yeah. To find delta x? Yep, so I, instead of writing 62 here, you should plug in 31. And uh, for everybody else, uh, you know that the time, uh, the 62 and the, uh, the initial velocity and all that, that's, those are red numbers. And so on WebAssign, when the number is red, that means it's a number that's different for everybody. So the, num the problem we just worked here works with Brandon's problem. It won't work with anybody else's. So um, the, the method we used will be the same, but the numbers we used will be different. Okay, Th does that make sense to everybody? How you doing, Brandon? Does that help out? Yeah, it does. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. <clears throat> what other questions do you all have? They can be questions about the class or, or physics questions. I had a question from the lab because yeah. I just didn't remember how to do the math. That's fine. Good. Um, That's fine. Good. So it was number eight E on the first lab. Okay. Um, is it one that has a picture? Okay. Can you just, let me erase the board and then you can read it to me, okay? Okay. Okay, uh, go ahead, Lakin. What, what's that? How's that question go? Okay, it was three plus eight, and then it had um, five minus five over three cubed in parentheses. Five yep. minus five over x cubed. I think I better look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Let me pull it up here. Which number are we looking at? It's number eight, part E. Oh, I see, I see, okay. Three plus eight times five minus five over x cubed equals 174. And your job is to solve for x. Yeah, this is a, uh, a challenging one. This is probably the hardest one in that set. Um, so, uh, you remember, do you remember PEMDAS from, you know, way back yes. in the day, right? P, oops. P, E, M, D, A, S. What does it stand for? Parentheses. Exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Okay. 
and, and these two kind of happen at the same time, and these two happen at the same time, but we, set, we put it in PEMDAS, so it's kind of like a word. Um, so if you didn't know this answer, for instance, and you had a number here, let me put, let me put a number here, uh, like four, okay? If this was what you were doing and you were looking for this here, you would do it in this order, okay? But we're not doing that. We're doing this, where we solve for that. In which case, we do this in reverse. So we're doing sad map. Okay, so to, so to solve for x, you gotta do sad map. Okay, does that make sense? So what we're gonna do here is we're going to first look for addition or subtraction, which would be here. So our goal, the, our long-term goal here is to get that x upstairs and by itself. That, that's, that's our goal, in that order. First upstairs, then by itself, okay? Well, right now it's not by itself and it's not upstairs, right? So we go to a sad map over here and, and uh, let's get rid of this three. So how do we get rid of that three? Subtract it from both sides. Yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna take this whole thing here and subtract three and then we're gonna subtract three over here. And what's that, what, that, what that's gonna do is just get rid of this three here so this is going to cross out here and here. And so now we're going to have 8 times 5 minus 5 over x cubed equals uh, 171. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> you might be saying, but wait a second, what about this? That's subtraction. Shouldn't we be doing that one first? Well, the problem is it's inside these parentheses. And since parentheses are the very last thing we do, we can't get there yet. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna, our next piece here, so we've taken care of the addition and subtraction, now we're gonna go up to this one. Is there any addition and multiplication before we get to the parentheses, because parentheses are last? And there is, right? So how do we get rid of that eight? Mm -hmm. You divide by the eight. Yeah, so we're gonna divide both sides by eight. And the eight's gonna go away. Uh, do you want me to find you in a few minutes? No, I just wanted to introduce, introduce you to a student. Oh, okay. Hey, how you doing? Good. What's your name? Brandon. Brandon. Nice. Excellent. Uh, come, come find me. I have study sessions in the afternoon, so I'm in, a, I've got a, I'm in a study session right now. But come find me and let's talk. Sound good? Sorry about that. Uh, okay. So we divide by 8. Okay, so this has gone over here. So now we've got 5 minus 5 over x cubed. And I'm just going to leave that as a fraction. You can punch it out if you want, but I'm just going to leave it as a fraction. But notice what this did. We no longer have parentheses now. So mm -hmm. in, in, in stepping through this process, the parentheses went away. But now that we're inside the process, now we're inside the parentheses, so now we go through this process again. We do sad map again. Okay, so now, what do I do first? Um, you would subtract the five. Yeah, we'll get rid of that. Now, five. Yeah, so what are we gonna do? Should we add or subtract? Let me ask the question, what's negative? Is the five negative, or this five over x cubed negative? Yeah, you're supposed to subtract the five because the five over the x cubed is negative. Exactly, so what we'll do here is we'll uh, subtract a five on this side and subtract a five on this side. Okay, so. That's where I was like, I got confused because I distributed the eight up there, so that's where I messed up. Okay. And then, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, you could distribute that eight through there, it's just gonna make it messier later. So. It made it very messy. Yeah, there's, uh, you know that, that American colloquialism, there's, there's many ways to skin this cat which is really disgusting if you think about that, but the, the point is there's multiple options here. And, uh, and, and yeah, what you did is correct, but it's, it's painful. 
Okay, so we'll subtract that 5. So now we've got a negative 5 over x cubed is equal to 171 over 8 minus 5. Okay, so now what do we do? Um, you would have to divide by the x cubed so you can get it at the, I meant multiply by it so you can get it at the top. There you go. So we'll take, we'll multiply both sides by x cubed. Um, x cubed, and we'll do the same thing over here. Notice the whole thing times x cubed. And what that does is, you just said it, it's going to get rid of it downstairs over here and leave it upstairs over there. And that's our goal. Remember, we were, our two goals, get it upstairs and by itself. It, now it's upstairs. Okay, and I'll carry this over here. So now we've got <coughs> negative 5 is equal to 171 over 8 minus 5, the whole thing times x cubed. Okay, so now what are we going to do? Um, you divide by the 171 over 8 minus 5. Exactly. So we're going to take this whole parentheses and divide it downstairs to the other side. So we'll divide by 171 over 8 minus 5, the whole shebang there, and we've got to do the whole shebang over here. 171 over 8 minus 5. And so it's going to cancel out here. And so now we've got <coughs> x cubed upstairs is equal to negative 5 divided by 171 over 8 minus 5. And there we go. What's our last step? Um, then you would have to take the cube root. Right. And, and oftentimes calculators don't have a cubed root button. Um, some of them do, some of them don't. The way you do that is you, do, you push the caret button, to, like, that means to the power of, and so you push to the power of a third. Okay. So cube root is the same as the power of a third. So I'm going to write it that way up here in case your calculator doesn't have a cube root button. Um, but a cube root is the same thing though. So, uh, so what I would do is I would do to the power of one-third here and to the power of one-third here. And so now we finally end up with um, x equals negative 5 over 171 over 8 minus 5, parentheses downstairs, and then to the power of a third there. And now to finally get that final answer, now you would use PEMDAS to punch out that answer. Okay. But to undo this, we use SADMEP. Okay. Does that Thank clarify you. that? Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Um, and about that question, yeah. do you want us to have, like, how many significant figures would you like in our answers? Uh, okay, so with this particular lab, let me, let me look at it again to make sure. Um, so the instructions on this one say, please consider significant figure and precision rules on problems one and two only. So that means the rest okay. of them, I don't care. Uh, so just give me a reasonable one. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfectly correct. Um, but just, I just WebAssign likes three sig figs. That's reasonable. Um, but, but one and two apply the sig fig rules and do it properly. But the rest of it, I don't care. And that and that's true with, so with all the homework, um, WebAssign always likes three sig figs for no good reason. It it's may or may not be proper. It just wants three sig figs, except when. Occasionally, you'll find a problem that'll be like this. It'll have a blue box up here, and this side will be all blue except a check mark. It'll have a white check on it, um, and, and a 4.0 over here. It looks like that. If the problem has that symbol on it, that means it's looking for sig fig rules. So it wants you to do the problem and apply sig fig rules. Does that make sense? So all the web assigned problems, just give it three sig figs, it doesn't matter. But if it's got this symbol on it, it means it's looking for 
it's looking for you to apply the sig fig rules. And, and those rules uh, need to be applied in all of the labs, except for this first one, because sig fig rules deal with measurements. And so, so there you go. D does that answer your question, Brandon? Kind of? Yeah, it does. Okay. Um, I just had a question about at the end of that uh, problem that we were just on. Yeah. So you uh -huh. said we just put the end in the calculator or just to simplify it? Oh, yeah, this one? Yeah, just, yes. just uh, use the, the PEMDAS rules to punch this into your calculator and, um, and then just give me the decimal answer um, for that one. Okay. And, and, and with I also that, had a question. Oh, okay. And with this cube root here, uh, some calculators are going to be able to have, a, have a hard time with a cube root and a negative, and some calculators aren't. Uh, if, if, it, if your calculator is yelling at you about that, and some calculators will, they'll just say, error, 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 I can't do this. Just take that negative right out front. Um, anyway, the answer could be positive or negative. Um, well, no, it's got to be negative. That, the only way that would work would be a negative. So um, anyway, there you go. So if your calculator yells at you with a third, with a cube root and a negative, then just pull the negative out, but realize that your answer has to be negative. Okay. And I also had a question about uh, 14 I, on the lab. Uh -huh. I was struggling with, just forgot how to exactly go about solving it. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, this is actually, there's actually nothing to solve here. Um, it's just a trig rule. So uh, actually there's, a, on, that, on the lab page, there's, on, on lab one, there's a couple of documents. There's this one, that you, the lab that you work through, but then there's also a, um, what do I call it? A math check sheet or a, what's it called? Uh, the, hand, the math hand sheet, I think I call it. Um, pull that up, and that's just a list of things that you should know. And, and, and uh, this is not a sheet that you can use on the test, but it's a thing to remind you of all the math rules that you probably forgot. I mean, this is just life, right? We've, I forget stuff all the time. And so this math hand sheet is things that you should just know off the top of your head. And, uh, and this is one of them. And it's just a, it's just a silly trig rule from back in the day. Uh, so it's on that math hand, math hand sheet that you can look on there, or you could just Google that trig identity. Um, once, once you see it, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, I knew that once. I forgot about it though. <laughs> Okay, thank you. What other questions do y'all have? David, you've been pretty quiet the whole time. Oh, I'm a, I don't think I have anything. Okay. There's nothing wrong with being quiet. I'm just... Um. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Can we look at number 11 on the homework? Sure. Okay, so the, the speedboat problem? Yes. Okay. So a speedboat increases its speed uniformly from 20 meters per second to 29 meters per second in a distance of 190 meters and then it asks you to which uh, draw a coordinate system for the situation and label the relevant quantities including vectors and it gives you four options as to which one is correct <clears throat> okay uh, okay so what's your question with this one um so I tried using the like for Part C. Um, I tried using the fourth formula to okay. find A, um, but I ended up getting a negative. Okay. And I don't think that's correct. Um. Okay. Give me your numbers, Brandon. Do what? Give me your uh, the numbers that you, that okay. WebAssign gives you. Um, initials twenty. Finals twenty nine. 
And then delta x is 1.9 times 10 to the second meters. And, and what would this be in not scientific notation? Uh, 190 meters. Good. Okay, and what does part C ask for? Uh, well, part C is using variables to kind of fill out the formula for acceleration, um, and then part D actually plugs everything in. Oh, okay. So, uh, so it wants acceleration in terms of VF, VI, and delta X. Okay, so, um, so we're given these and we're asked for acceleration. Okay, so what equation should we use? Um, number four. Yeah, that's the only one that has all those variables in it, right? So when we write this out, we're gonna have VF squared equals VI squared plus two A delta X. <clears throat> and now we've got to solve this for A. So now we're going to apply that, those sad map rules and get A all by itself, upstairs and by itself. So what should we do first? Uh, you said you're breaking up a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, how do we get A? We're going to have to apply the sad map rules and get acceleration. Divided everything by delta X first? Nope, not yet. Remember, Subtract. yeah, remember yeah, sad map, one. right? Sad addition and subtraction first, right? Oh, yeah. So let's get rid of this chunk here by subtracting the VI to the other side. Okay, so we're going to subtract VI squared from both sides. So we're going to have VF squared minus VI squared equals. 2a delta x. Now, a is upstairs, but it's not by itself. How do we get it by itself? Um, you divide it by delta x. Okay. I guess you could do 2 delta x. Yep, we're going to have to do both of them, right? So we might as well do both at once. So we'll divide the whole thing by 2 delta x. <clears throat> so the 2 cancels out here and the delta x cancels out there and now we've got a over here and all this over here and I think this is what it's asking for um, yeah so uh, a couple notes uh, when WebAssign wants you to write an equation when you put your cursor in the box a little palette will pop up on the right side and um, that'll give you is, is looking for um, anything like the V, it's looking for subscript and superscript here. So subscript is the F and the superscript is the square. And so there'll be a little button on your palette box that you can push um, to get the subscript and the superscript. And uh, make sure you either put a multiplication or a space in here so it's not one big variable but a two and then the second variable that's a delta X. And there should be a, a Greek letters to type in the delta. Sorry, you were in and out the whole time. Oh, I'm sorry. Is, no, you're are, fine. Is it, there, do you all, is, it, is it Brandon's internet that's going out in and out, or is it my internet? Did, do the rest of you all hear me? It was going in and out for me, too. Oh, no. So that means my internet's going in and out. Um, hmm. Okay. It says it's good here. Well, I'll just say it again, hopefully. I'll say it, is it too quiet or is it just going in and out? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, I'll just say it again. Okay, uh, and I'll say it louder and closer in case it's that way. Um, when WebAssign is looking for an equation, which it does sometimes, you put your cursor in the box and then on the right hand side, a pallet box, a little toolbox will open up. And when that toolbox opens up, it wants you to type in the equation just like the variables it gave you. So for instance, it said VF, it means V subscript F. It doesn't want VF, like side by side, it wants V subscript F. And, and so since this is squared, you're going to need a, uh, um, 
the, the, su the subscript for the F and the superscript for the square, but there should be a button for that. So you just push the button and it pops up. And, and make sure that you put a space here between your two and your delta X, either a space or a multiplication, multiplication sign, so it doesn't think that this is all one big variable. It's, it's a two and then a delta X. There, and there should be uh, Greek symbols so you can get the delta and uh, all that stuff is there. Does that, does that help? Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. And, and what I, is... I didn't do the um, minus the VI initial uh, first. Okay. So I, I messed up the reverse from DOS. Okay. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> WebAssign, when you're typing these equations, can be kind of tooky sometimes. So uh, if you think you got it right, just email me and, and, and I can double check it. And sometimes, sometimes you do have it right and WebAssign just didn't, didn't see it. Um, it's just a silly computer. It can't actually read. So um, if you don't type it out pretty close to what it thinks the answer should be, it might count it wrong even though you got it right. So just let me know if that's the case and I can fix it. What other questions do y'all have? Y'all are quiet. Okay. I. Uh, Well, if, if we don't have to, like, y'all don't have to ask questions, but I don't want to tell you you have to go if, if I'm cutting somebody off. So um, yell out if you have a question, or, uh, or, or we can be done for the day, too. Any more questions? OK. Well, thanks, y'all. And if uh, our, next, our next study session is uh, this Thursday, I believe, right? So. Um, if you have more questions between now and then, let me know. And uh, if not, I'll see you on Thursday. Happy studying. Okay. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Yep. See Thank you. you. Oh. Yeah, go ahead, Brandon. Um, Dr. Rivers, so I actually remembered with number four. I know I'd emailed you about it oh, before. Did you? Okay. But you, I I'll, still, I don't know why. I did the, um, so change in velocity over change in time. And I tried that, but I still don't get the correct answer. Number four? Yeah, on the homework. Wait, so, when I look at number four, I don't see, it's the coordinate system problem? Yes. Did I answer it wrong? Did I answer your question wrong? Maybe that was a different one, sorry. Um, I think that was from a different question. Okay. Um, let me look at number Yeah, that was her, I, did, I got that one correct. Um, so you said, how are the poems? Yeah, you still have a red X next, next, to, not next to number four. Right. You wanna talk through number four? Yeah, that would be awesome. I, okay. So, I, so like today you said that um, when it has that checkbox, it's um, wanting not three sig figs, but a certain number. So is it just two sig figs? Well, you got to step through the sig fig process to figure that out. So, so let's write it out and see, okay? Okay. So it gives you two coordinates, and I'll, I'll draw them out here. Um, let's see, 5.3 and 3.2, so here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so 5.3 and 2, 3, 4, 5, 3.2, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5.3 and 3.2 and then and negative 2.95. 2.9 and, and positive 5? 
Okay. Yes. Okay, so negative 2.9 and positive 5.0. And so here's your two coordinates, and what does it ask for? It wants just the distance, right? Yes. Okay, so we just, we just look at this, and we, we try to find that distance. And so what we want to do now um, is uh, draw a straight line here and a straight line here, and find your delta y and your delta x. <coughs> And so it, it's only looking. It's only looking for a distance, so we don't even care about positive or negative. Like, there's no arrow. It's not necessarily going this way or this way. We don't really care. We just want distance, right? So we just want to know yeah. this amount and this amount. Okay. So how do we get the delta x? Um, you just uh, subtract 5.9, or I guess you. It would just be adding two distances, so like 5.9 minus negative 2.9, no, 5.3 minus negative 2.9. Right. Which gives you 8.2. Exactly. Okay, so delta x is equal to 5.3 minus negative 2.9. Now, let's not actually do it yet. Let's just, let's just write it all out, okay? Okay. How are we going to get um, delta y? It would be 3.2 minus 5. Or other way around, right? Since we're just looking for the amount, it doesn't really matter. Okay, then yeah. Sorry, I didn't know what yeah. you had to do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because we're just looking for the amount, we just want to know the positive value. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, it does. 3.2. Okay. Now, neither one of those is going to give us this. How are we going to use them to get this, though? Theorem. Yeah, so we'll do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So the distance, and I'll just write capital D for distance, is going to be the square root, uh, let me make it shorter here, uh, delta x squared plus delta y squared, and now let's write this out. <coughs> and I'll write it out over here. So d is equal to the square root of delta x squared, so 5.3 uh, plus 2.9 squared plus 5.0 minus 3.2 squared. Okay, so now that we have it all written out, and I, you see how I cleverly turned that into a positive. It's not so clever, but I just did it, right? Okay, what's the rule for addition and subtraction? Um, you, uh, it's like the... If there's one place after the decimal place and one of them and two in the other, you have to go by the least amount. Okay, so the, least amount of the, the big key here is least what? So you can't just say keep the least. You gotta say keep the least, the least what? Figures. Nope. You keep the least number of sig figures for multiplication and division. So our first step here is addition, in which key case you keep the least precise. Okay. And there's a big difference between least precise and least sig figs. Okay. Okay? Does yeah. that make sense? So for addition and subtraction, let me write it out. <coughs> for addition or subtraction, least precise. Everybody always says, keep the least, but least what? And then for multiplication and division, you keep the least sig fig. Okay. Okay, so let's do that now. So now, the only way to do this is to write it all out, painful step by painful step. So we're going to do square root. And so what's 5.3 plus 2.9? I think you already told me once. 8.2. Okay, so that the answer here is going to be 8.2. Now, we still have to square that, but hold on a second. Let's apply our rule now. The rule says keep the least precise. So what's the precision of 5.3? What do you mean? 
it, in, let me say it this way. If it was five, the answer would be it's precise to the ones place. Okay. If it was 50, you'd say it's precise to the tens place. But since it's 5.3, it's precise to the tens. Exactly. So what's the precision of this one? Um, the tens. Right. And what's the precision of this one? The tens. So what's the answer? Tens. Yeah, it's the least precise, and since they both have the same, it's precise to the tens. Does that make sense? So if let me let's so let's try it a couple different ways. So if it was five point three plus plus three. So then it would just be to the ones place. Right. So then our answer, we'd look at this and we'd say, oh, okay, that's I can do that in my head. That's eight point three. But the rule says is this one's precise to the tenths, and this one's precise to our ones. So our answer is only here. Okay. Does that make sense? So here's what I'm going to do. Now, the way we did this, uh, these are both precise to the tenths, so our answer is precise to the tenths. Now, I'm not going to round it off yet. I'm just going to underline it so I can keep track of it. So don't round it off till you finish. Um, Dr. Upton? Yes? Are you still there? Oh, sorry. You, like, went in and out for a second. It's oh. raining. So I, I think maybe the Wi-Fi is messing up or something. Okay. Yeah, that could be. Anyway. So uh, did you catch what I said here about underlining things? <coughs> no, I said underlining. Okay. So the key is don't round anything off until you're done. Okay. But underline it so you can keep track. Okay. So I'm underlining the two, the, the ones that the tenths place here, because this particular number is precise to the tenths place. So I'm going to underline that two there. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to keep writing this out. So I, I carry my square down, and now I'm right at this next one. So I'm going to do plus. Now what, what's this one here? 5.0 minus 3.2. 1.2, and then underline the two. Good. Okay, now we need to square this. Now, squaring is multiplication. And what's the rule for multiplication? Keep the least amount of segments. Right, which is very different. So this thing here, this is 8.2 times 8.2. How many sig figs do we have here? That's two. How many sig figs do we have here? Two. So in our multiplication and division, we're going to keep the least number of sig figs. What's our answer need to have? Just two. Two sig figs. OK, so what's this product here? Now, give me all the numbers that your calculator gives. 67.4. But the rule says you're, you actually only know information to the least number of sig figs. So you only get to keep two sig figs. So you see how I underlined the, six, the seven here? Because I only get to keep two of these. But again, I'm not going to round anything off until I, until I finish. OK. OK? So, so let me write that out here. So now we're going to have <coughs> square root of 67.24. And I'm going to underline the seven. And we're going to do plus. And what's this next one? It's 1.2 times 1.2. It's going to be 1.44. Okay. Correct. Because we only get two sig figs out of that. Okay, so now <coughs> we're back to an addition problem. And what's the rule with addition? Keep the least precise. Right. And now, what's this one precise to? So it's um, set the uh, tenths place. So no, nope. try that again. Wait, what's, what's this one precise to? The one place. Yes. Sorry. And what's this one precise to? The tenths. Right. So this is the tenths, and this is the ones. So what's the least precise? The ones. Right. So without rounding, don't round anything off. Without rounding these off, what's that summation? Um, what's the 
times the what? what the, the addition. What's the summation here? Um, so 67 plus 1? No, no, no. Don't round anything off. Oh. Don't round so anything off till the end. So write it, punch it all in, and we'll round it at the very last step. Okay, so 67 point 24. Sixty-eight point six eight. Is that what is that what you just said here? Sixty-eight point six eight. Yes. Okay. Now we just added there. So what's the rule with addition? Um, the least uh, precise. So what's our answer good to here? Um, the sixty-eight. Right. The first one. This the, is the, the eight. The first eight. Right. The ones place. The first eight. You're right. Okay. Which will go to sixty-nine, right? Nope. We don't round anything off to the end. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so now, 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 pause for a second. You're right, you're going to take the square root now. But, remember, square root is like division. Okay, what times, you're un, you know, square is what, t is this times this, right? Square root is what times what? So it's, it's the undo of multiplication, which is division. So the rule with division is keep the least number of sig figs. So okay. how many sig figs do we have in this answer, in this number here? Two. Correct. So when you take the square root of that, how many sig figs are you going to have? Two. Two sig figs. OK, so w when you punch this out, what do you get? Um, 8.287. Okay. So you're only going to keep to 8.2. So what you're going to do here, the answer now will be 8.3. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. I thought uh, the significant figure rule was like, like the wording is just a lot different than what like we had in like chemistry and stuff. So I'll have to like practice that. Yep. Yep. But and, and that, that painful, miserable process, there's just no way around it. You've got to write out every single miserable step. I know this is just a simple problem. You can just punch it out, and you can just start at the beginning and say, oh, just keep two. Well, you might not be right. <laughs> the only way to know for sure is to step through every single little step and just write it out every time with the little underlines and everything. Okay. Okay, and, and the sad news is what we just did here is what you've got to do on all the labs which is, okay. kind of, is kind of a miserable process, but that's the way it is. This is how measurement yeah, works. Nature. Yeah. yeah. Well, we nature eventually. It won't take yep. too long. Yep, exactly. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much for staying after. I appreciate it. Sure. I, I'm not staying after at all. I was, I was planning on being here till what, 4 o'clock? I mean, I, I have an hour and a half set aside for the study session, so whatever. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Yep. Have a good night. Okay, you too. See you later.